This is episode 125 of Teacher Approved. You're listening to Teacher Approved, the podcast helping educators elevate what matters and simplify the rest. I'm Heidi. And I'm Emily. We're the creators behind Second Story Window, where we give research-based and teacher-approved strategies that make teaching less stressful and more effective. You can check out the show notes and resources from each episode at secondstorywindow.net. We're so glad you're tuning in today. Let's get to the show. Hey there, thanks for joining us today. In today's episode, we're talking about using theme days to help you survive the end of year and sharing a teacher-approved tip for a low-prep fast finisher. We start our episodes with a morning message, just like we used to do at morning meeting in our classrooms. This week's morning message is, this is a good one, ruin a field trip in four words. (laughs) People had a lot of fun with this one. Yeah, Melissa said, kid just threw up. (laughs) And lots of other teachers shared the same one. (laughs) Consider this a friendly reminder to bring plastic bags with you on your next field trip. Yes, and I am so sorry to say that my child has been the child that threw up on a field trip. And I just, as a former teacher, I feel so much guilt that it was my child. (laughs) I'm so sorry. You're letting down the cause, Emily. (laughs) Janelle said, parent cussed around students. Yikes. (laughs) Stacy said, forgot to schedule transportation. Oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> you know there's no way to book buses at the last minute. <laughs> I recently had a nightmare that the opposite problem happened. I guess my four words would be, forgot to tell parents. Oh, no. <laughs> I dreamed that the buses showed up, but we had forgotten to let anyone else know that we were going on a field trip. No permission slips, nothing. <laughs> I am glad it was just a dream. The things teachers dream about. <laughs> Well, Christine has the real nightmare. I can't find him. Oh, no. (laughs) Or this one from Holly. This kid isn't ours. (laughs) (laughs) And Misty adds, we have a stowaway. Oh, no. She says that's a true story from a trip to D.C. Oh, gosh. (laughs) I think we need more details, Misty. Donna has the classic, I pooped my pants. (laughs) Again, bring the plastic bags. I guess that won't help too much, though, unless you have something to change into. (laughs) I have to visit the gift shop, depending where you are. (laughs) I had a student do that at a play once, and we didn't notice until we were back on the bus and couldn't identify the smell. Oh, yeah. Good times. (laughs) Sharika has this true story. She says, teacher, river fell in. And (laughs) Sharika, I think we need more of the details there. Yeah. Teresa has another true story. Bus is in ditch. (laughs) She said, no one was hurt, but we were stuck and missed the trip because there was no tow truck for hours. Oh, yikes. Katie said, the bathrooms are locked. Oh. (laughs) And Amy's got the one we've all heard. I forgot my lunch. (laughs) We had awesome lunch workers, though, who always sent us extra lunches just in case. I would hope that most schools do that. (laughs) Well, that's assuming that the lunches get on the bus, Kara says. Where are the lunches? Oh, no. (laughs) Kim has this nightmare. What's fifth's disease? (laughs) Oh, no. Oh, no. April says, chaperones cancel last minute. Oh, man. Field trips are not for the faint of heart. Teachers, you are amazing. And we would love to hear you ruin a field trip in four words over in our teacher-approved Facebook group. Teaching during the last month of school is one of the biggest challenges as teachers. You are completely burned out after a long, demanding year, and your students are getting antsy from the good weather with the promise of summertime looming just around the corner. But I guess, unfortunately, we can't just write off the last month and do nothing. And completely throwing out your previous schedule will upset that delicate balance of overwhelm and boredom that we talk about so often when we discuss student engagement. So what's a teacher to do? Well, we have something that has worked amazing for us at the end of the year. Theme days. Woohoo! Now, what are the benefits of theme days, Heidi? Well, there are a couple of really big benefits to doing theme days. First off, theme days keep your students engaged. The thing we want most as teachers is for our students to be actively engaged in what we're doing each day. Right. The more engaged students are the less likely they are to be off task and causing problems. Yeah, so that's a big win right there. And most importantly, if they're engaged, they're more likely to actually be learning something. Yes, so the reason theme days work so well for engagement at the end of the year 
is because of that engagement model we discuss all the time. So Heidi, remind us about our engagement model. What does that look like? Well, picture an old-timey balance scale or one of those plastic ones that you put the little bears in in math time. (laughs) On one side of the scale, we have routine, and on the other side of the scale, we have novelty. You need to find the perfect balance between those two things to keep your students engaged. At the beginning of the year, everything is naturally very novel, so you are going to be dumping most of your coins, so to speak, into the routine side of the scale to keep your kids from being overwhelmed. But at the end of the year, your routines are so well-worn that that side of the scale is overflowing, leading to a major cause of student boredom. We need to combat that by adding in novelty. And theme days are the perfect way to do that so your students are still engaged each day, even as you march towards summer break. The second huge benefit is not to be ignored. Theme days make planning easier. Is there anyone more done than a teacher at the end of the school year. No way. (laughs) This job requires so much of you that it is so common for teachers to be running on fumes the last few weeks of school. And to make matters worse, you likely had to cram all your content into the previous months to prepare your students for end of year testing. So with your curriculum done, what are you supposed to do with these remaining weeks of school? We have found theme days to be the perfect option for those funny weeks you still need to plan for. Theme days likely sound like a ton of work, but they really don't have to be. Yes, they do require some prep. You'll need to invest some time and resources up front to get your materials ready and gather some books and other supplies. But bonus, you can use them again year after year after year. And theme days really do make planning easier because you have a certain structure for the day that you want to follow. You're going to do a set number of activities, so that can limit your plans from feeling too overwhelming. So if you want to boost student engagement and simplify your planning at the same time, theme days are the perfect end of year solution. Now, what do we mean by a theme day? A theme day is just a day of fun learning activities designed around a certain theme. The theme is what adds the novelty you're looking for to boost engagement, but it's also a way to increase structure. The theme puts boundaries around the novelty so it doesn't become a wild free-for-all. You're channeling the novelty into one direction so it helps curb overwhelm and boredom. The big decision that you need to make up front is how immersive you want your theme days to be. And there's truly no right or wrong answer here. You do not need to do a full classroom transformation in order to have a fun theme day. If you want to do a classroom transformation, then by all means, more power to you. For some teachers, a classroom transformation is the sort of thing they love about teaching. And having some of those at the end of the year would just light them up. And they absolutely should do that then. But if that sounds overwhelming to you, it's absolutely not necessary. Emily and I definitely never did full-blown transformations. Because we didn't have the energy for that. And my personal rule for myself is that I didn't plan anything in my class that required me to climb. So I'm not (laughs) hanging anything from the ceiling. Plus, I have that personal no DIY rule. So I think the full classroom transformation would violate my personal beliefs. (laughs) But you get to decide. Make your theme day as simple or as involved as it feels enjoyable to you. Don't feel any guilt whether you go simple or go all out. I've seen both decisions being shaded, so don't let that into your life. (laughs) Whichever one you choose is right for you, and that is great. The next thing you need to decide is how much of your routine you want to keep. What Emily and I like to do is instead of a full transformation, we kept our regular schedule and we just made the content more fun and themed. On camping day, they may do their silent reading in a makeshift tent around their desk. Or their phonics practice might be rocket ship themed on space day. But silent reading and phonics practice aren't new. Keeping a portion of your theme day activities rooted in the routines that you already have will help keep the day from tipping too far into novelty and overwhelm and will also prevent you from having to do a lot of extra planning. Hey there, teacher friend. Do you have a question or concern that could use a teacher-proof solution? We'd love to help you out by answering your question here on the podcast. You can submit your questions to hello at secondstorywindow.net and put podcast question in your subject line. 
can't wait to hear what's on your mind. Now, what theme should you do? There are so many fun themes you could do for a theme day. Truly, if there is an interest you have, there are probably ideas out there for using it as a theme day. Yeah. So let's talk about some of the theme days we've done in the past. One of our favorites and one of the most popular ones I've seen around is the camping theme. We call ours Camp Learn a Lot. And then another one that we love is Quiet as a Mouse Day. I don't know if that's as popular, but it should be because the kids can't talk all day long. It is blissful. And the kids really get a kick out of it. It's such a fun challenge for them. I love that theme. (laughs) Other fun themes are space, circus, ice cream, boot camp. Safari, chocolate, chocolate, farm, chef, pirates, detective, the floor is lava. <laughs> I could go on and on. You get the idea. You could do a theme day on literally anything. Truly, there are so many to pick from. If this is your first time doing theme days, I would set a goal just to do one. Get it all planned and scheduled. And if you still have time and energy after that, you could maybe plan and prep another one. You definitely don't want to do yourself in by committing to a week of theme days and then getting overwhelmed with all the planning (laughs) partially through it. Yeah, I've been there. And if you want to make all of your work stretch a little longer, you could have a whole theme week instead of just one theme day. For sure. Or you could work something out with your teammates and have everyone plan and prep one theme for the rest of the team. If you're going that route, just make sure you set clear guidelines ahead of time so everyone knows how much to plan. For example, make a 12-page work packet, plan a math activity, plan a STEM activity for small groups, gather books from the library, etc. If you are looking to plan your own theme day, we have three tried and true tips to help you. Tip number one is use books. We love reading multiple picture books to our class each day, so picking books for your theme day will make that simple practice feel extra special. Plus, reading to your students is a simple time filler. We like to use the books to introduce the different activities that we do throughout the day. And if we have a lot of books on that topic, we sometimes put them out for individual reading time as well, or we could put them into a center for rotation. Utilize the library if you don't want to spend a lot of money on new books. Although I'm always looking for an excuse to buy books, let's be honest. No kidding. And if you want to use this theme day again, it's maybe just handy to have what you need all ready to go. Yes, but of course, the library is a great option too. Okay, Emily, what is tip number two? Tip number two is to use a work packet. That is a great way to ensure you're still meeting learning goals during your theme days. And they can help your students avoid overwhelm by having a fun packet of activities to work through on their own at their desk. If you do use a work packet, we recommend copying your work pages at 50% so you can fit four work pages on one sheet of paper. And in our experience, most kids can handle working in the smaller space just fine. I know a work packet does not sound like tons of fun, but in our experience, the kids really enjoy them. Yeah, throw a word search in there and they'll think it's a party. Yeah. (laughs) And if you are going to reduce the pages, just remember you need a multiple of four so you don't end up with a random blank page. So. You could do 8, 12, 16. I guess you go 20 if you're really into it. Yeah. Well, if you're going to stretch it out all week, you'd want one of those longer packs. Yeah. Think about how long you need to fill. And that brings us to tip number three, which is to incorporate review. This is another way to meet your learning goals on a theme day. Your students have learned so many amazing things this year, and we want to keep all of that knowledge top of mind so it gets solidified in those cute little brains before heading off for summer vacation. And if you want to do some easy theme days without a lot of prep, we have you covered. We created two theme days that we call Delight Days because we are a (laughs) sucker for an acronym that no one understands Mm -hmm. except us. Delight, D-L-I-T-E, stands for Differentiated Learning and Integrated Theme Experience. (laughs) Or you could just call it a theme day. (laughs) But Delight Day has such a nice ring to it. It does. They are a delight. The theme days we currently have available are for camping and space. Maybe you already got the space theme for Leap Day. That's right. If you have the Leap Day resource, it also included the Delight Day version of some of the same activities. So that was a two for one if you bought that. And each of our theme days are designed to be little to no prep. So you can put these together without a lot of stress. 
Our theme day sets include a differentiated work packet, so you can pick the level of difficulty you want to use for the included math and ELA practice pages. And of course, the packet includes some just for fun pages too. Next, we include a whole class review game that reinforces the topics that are covered in the work packet. So you're getting that double review there. For Space Day, it's a fun moon rock activity where the questions are on paper that we crumbled up like moon rocks and they can pick a rock from the floor to answer it and then toss it back. Then we've got themed writing activities like campfire story writing, themed differentiated close reading passages, themed brain breaks, and more. We designed these bundles with you in mind to make your theme days easy and memorable. We will link to our camping and space theme days, our delight days, in the show notes. <laughs> we also have a free theme day planning guide you can use to plan for any theme you want to do. We'll link to that in the show notes as well. We'd love to hear what theme days you like to do. Come join the conversation in our Teacher Approved Facebook group. Now let's talk about this week's Teacher Approved Tip. Each week we leave you with a small, actionable tip that you can apply in your classroom today. This week's Teacher Approved Tip is use your work packet as a fast finisher. Tell us more about that, Heidi. Whenever you do something that is outside your normal classroom routine, you don't have a way to know if kids will race through it or if the opposite will be the problem and it will take three times as long as you're expecting. To take some of the pressure off of your theme day, plan a fast finisher for your activities. And the easiest way to do that is to rely on the work packet that you're already making. The way to make this work is to make your packet longer than your kids can do in one sitting. Add in a few just for fun pages like a maze or a word search to keep the interest up. And then schedule some time in the morning for working on the packet. Then as you go through the rest of the day, have the kids keep their packets on their desks. If they finish early with an activity, they can just return to working on the pages. It's easy peasy. I found like 12 pages to 16 pages is really kind of ideal to keep them busy. A bonus of work packet time is that it gives you teacher work time. If you have to catch up on your grading or start packing up cupboards or any other end of your tasks, this buys you a little time to get started on that. Better to do it while you're on the clock than have to sacrifice your own time for work tasks. Oh, any day of the week for sure. To wrap up the show, we are sharing what we're giving extra credit to this week. Emily, what gets your extra credit? I'm giving extra credit to the New York Times word game Strand. Yes. <laughs> so it's a new game from them that they're just testing out. And I do really love it slash hate it. <laughs> Last night, I was really hating it. I think it broke us a little bit inside. It's basically like a little word search, but you don't know what you're searching for. They give you a very vague hint about the theme, and that's it. It is such a vague hint. You need to use every letter on the board to find all the linked words plus the hidden theme name. It is a challenge, but it is so satisfying when you figure it out. We are total New York Times word game addicts at this point <laughs> because we play Wordle, Connections, Strands, and the mini crossword every day. And Strands definitely takes the longest to play usually. <laughs> it totally kicked my butt yesterday. If you try out this game, come tell us what you think in the Teacher Approved Facebook group. And I just realized, like, I haven't played the mini today, and I bet it's already switched over to tomorrow. So, oh, I know it turns over on an at an awkward time. That's why I started paying for the subscription. It's like two ninety nine a month, and then you can play all the old mini crosswords. Oh, so, that's good to know. Yes, worth considering if you're into your word games. <laughs> <laughs> We're in our word game and puzzle era. Apparently, I am. <laughs> well, I guess that's what happens when you're about to turn forty, Emily. <sighs> <sighs> Shut your mouth. <laughs> Yeah, we won't talk about my birthday. <laughs> That's true. No matter how old I get, you will always be older. So <laughs> what are you giving extra credit to this week, Heidi? Well, my extra credit goes to the season of Resident Alien that just wrapped up. I know I've talked about the show before, but it makes me laugh every week. It's just so consistently funny. It is a sci-fi show about an alien who comes to destroy the Earth and ends up taking over as the town doctor as you know <laughs> happens 
it's really more like a small town comedy than a sci-fi story if sci-fi isn't your fave. My favorite characters are the sheriff. He's so terrible. I love him so much. And Deputy... <laughs> I can't even talk about him without laughing. The sheriff and Deputy Liv, they just say the most ridiculous things with just the straightest deadpan delivery. They deserve all the Emmys. I don't think it's ever been nominated, but it should be. If you already watch it, please come talk about it in the Facebook group because Emily won't watch it and I need to talk about it with someone. I didn't say I won't watch it. I think I will watch it so that I finally know what you're talking okay, about. Good. Plus, I I need a new show because I'm finishing up all the things that I've been watching, which is the worst. We're kind of headed into that slow show season. <sighs> womp womp. <laughs> <laughs> but come talk about it in the Facebook group so we can catch up. That is it for today's episode. Give theme days a try this year. And don't forget our tip to maximize your work packet as a fast finisher. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Teacher Approved. I'm Heidi. And I'm Emily. Thank you for listening. Be sure to follow or subscribe in your podcast app so that you never miss an episode. You can connect with us and other teachers in the Teacher Approved Facebook group. We'll see you here next week. Bye for now. Bye. Bye.